All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Kruger Show with a little 49er video. Our buddy Kyle Madsen came up with a 49er trade that is very one-sided in the Niners' favor, but we'll talk a little bit about it because it is intriguing nonetheless. But first, we are brought to you by Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Check them out. They're in Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. or until they run out. Go get some brisket, some brisket chili. Go have the uh, pulled pork, the barbecue chicken. It's all amazing. House-made sausages. Uh, go say hi to Damon and Mary and tell them that Krug sent you. And this video is also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Check the link in the description. Use that promo code Krug, K-R-U-E-G, and they'll match you up to your first $100. Well, 49ers are obviously still uh, embroiled in a contract dispute uh, holdout situation with Brandon Ayuk. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of people think that this is eventually going to get done. The two sides will compromise and Ayuk will get signed. But when you look at the 49ers situation, <clears throat> you know, Brock Purdy's about to get paid a ton. They got a lot of talent on their roster and um, paying Ayuk you know, north of $30 million just doesn't seem like it's in the cards. And I think there's every reason, he has every reason to want to be paid $30 million a year. I think the market has exploded to that point, but it doesn't mean the Niners want to pay IU that kind of money, especially when they don't utilize him the way that uh, $30 million receivers typically get utilized. They have a lot of weapons. They spread the ball around. It probably is not in their best interest to to pay $30 million to one, one wide receiver, a wide receiver that wound up with only three catches in each playoff game and in the Super Bowl. He's a great player. He's a he's an incredible talent. He blocks downfield. He's a culture player. Um, but do the 49ers use him in a way that would that would you know justify paying him north of $30 million a year a year? And that's really the question. And I just get the feeling that we're looking at an impasse here where the Niners feel like they're dug in. Uh, according to reports, the Niners have offered Ayuk a contract extension that would pay him up to $26 million a year. Um, he's got to, you know, they, they can basically tell him, hey, um, sit there and play on the fifth year option at $14.1 million, and he has nothing he can do about it other than hold out. And if he holds out, then the year doesn't accrue and he doesn't advance his situation at all. The Niners also can franchise tag him for two more years after this. So, I mean, they they own his contractual rights, and he is not going anywhere unless they want to send him elsewhere. Uh, and he wants a deal that's more in line with what Amon Ross St. Brown received from the Lions, which is $30 million annually um, with a whole lot of guaranteed money. I, I, my, my guess is that Ayuk wants 30 to 32 million dollars annually, and he probably wants north of 75 million guaranteed. And I don't think the 49ers are of the mindset to offer him that. So what's going to happen? How's this is how's this all going to work out if um, they don't want to pay him and he wants to be paid? So it seems like as the days go by, there's there's less optimism that a deal's going to get done, and it sounds like there's a very good chance. Uh, that this guy holds out into training camp, into the preseason, maybe even into the regular season. Um, and if this is the case, I think the Niners would be smart to consider their options in the trade market. Now, Kyle Madsen of Niners Wire believes a good trade partner for the Niners would be the New England Patriots. And there's no question. I mean, I, the Patriots have tons of cap room and no wide receivers. The Niners have no cap room and tons of wide receivers. So it does make sense for the 49ers to trade Brandon Ayuk to the Patriots. Uh, but the question is, you know, what's a fair price? And it has to be a good enough price to be attractive to the 49ers because otherwise, what? why are they trading um, a great young receiver who's 26 in the prime of his career? Why are they trading him for future draft pick compensation only? That makes no sense. How do you look Trent Williams in the eye and say, hey, we just traded Brandon Ayuk for a first round pick next year? Well, how does that help Trent this year? How does that help the 49ers win the Super Bowl this year? So any trade coming to the 49ers is going to have to uh, in, um, include some significant piece that helps the 49ers win games in the 2024 season. Otherwise, there's really no there's no reason for them to even entertain it. Now, New England, on the other hand, 
is, should be absolutely desperate for Brandon Ayuk. Um, they have the worst collection of weapons in the entire NFL, and they just invested in a first-year quarterback um, in Drake May. Now, are they going to start Jacoby Brissett? Are they going to start Drake May? They also have Joe Milton, by the way. Um, but, I mean, look at their look at what they have as far as the weapons. They have Jalen Polk, the rookie from Washington, Kendrick Bourne, uh, Demario Douglas from Liberty, who's a nice little slot receiver. He's actually not bad. They got K.J. Osborne. They drafted Javon Baker from Central Florida. They have Jalen Rager, Kayshawn Booty uh, from LSU, Tyquan Thornton, who runs really well, Juju Smith-Schuster. Um, I mean, they've got a bunch of guys, but they don't have anybody who's one. They probably don't even have anybody who's a two. Um, you know, their starting tight end is Hunter Henry. They also have Austin Hooper. Uh, they drafted Jaheim Bell. They're they're going to run the ball a lot with Ramondre Stevenson. They picked up Antonio Gibson from the Commanders. They have the former Niner, Jamichael Hasty. Kevin Harris is not bad. Um, but I mean, they have no. They've got a rookie quarterback that they're hoping can can produce for them, and they don't have any receivers of note. So they badly, badly need Brandon Ayuk. There's no question about it. Now. The, the the deal that Kyle Madsen of Niners Wire suggests here, um, I don't think there's a chance in hell that New England would do this deal. Um, Madsen says if New England wanted to ship out a package that included cornerback Christian Gonzalez and a 2025 first-round pick, the 49ers would certainly listen. You think? Yeah, really? I mean, who, no, no shit. So if you offered Christian Gonzalez, who's a former first-round pick, and a first-round pick on a team that may wind up with the first pick in the draft, that the Niners would listen. What? Of course the Niners would listen. Everybody would listen. The Patriots are going to be, if not the worst team in the NFL, they're going to be a lock to finish in the top 10 in the draft. So why are they going to trade a top 10 2025 draft choice and Christian Gonzalez, a first-round corner, for Ayuk and then have to pay Ayuk, you know, $30 million a year. So now Madsen's arguing that this trade would benefit New England because they get the most salary cap in the NFL. Um, there's no doubt. I agree with his uh, assertion that they can they can pay Ayuk what he wants. Um, it would be nice to pair Ayuk with Drake May or Jacoby Brissett at the beginning and then Drake May and give New England – you know, a top level wide receiver for their offense, which obviously lacks a top level wide receiver. He says for San Francisco, they'd get a young cornerback who has years left on his rookie deal. Additionally, a first round pick from New England could end up being a top 10 pick, even with Ayuk on their team. Uh, and then he says, this is one of the rare trade pr proposals that does seem to be a win win for both teams. All right. Well, that's a win for the Niners. All right. And that's, this is a story written by a Niner fan uh, about the Niners from the Niner perspective without really thinking it through. Um, now, I love the deal because what Niner fan wouldn't love that deal? You're getting Christian Gonzalez and a first-round pick from a team that could wind up with the first pick in the draft? Yeah, yeah. I do that too, deal too, Madsen. Uh, but unfortunately, the Patriots get to choose, and they're probably not going to do that deal. Now, could you sweeten this deal? Now, Christian Gonzalez is from Texas. He's a 6'1", 200-pound corner. Uh, he ran 4'3", coming out of Oregon, 1'5", 4'10", split. Great athlete, 41.5-inch vert, 11'1", broad jump, uh, even decently strong. He had 14 reps on the bench. He was a four-star recruit when he signed with Colorado out of the Colony High School in Texas where he was, he basically played on all three teams. He's offense, defense, and special teams. Um, he started six games uh, for the Buffaloes in their 2020 season. And um, he was an honorable mention, all Pac-12 corner. And then their cornerback coach, Demetrius Martin, moved from Colorado to Oregon at the end of the year. And Gonzalez followed him to Oregon. He starred for the Ducks in 2022, first team all Pac-12 pick. After leading them with four picks and seven PBUs, he had 50 tackles and a block kick in 12 starts. He opted out of the team's bowl game. Um, and, you know, he comes from an athletic family. His father is a former UTEP basketball player who played semi-professionally in Columbia. 
Uh, his older sisters are former All-American track stars. Um, his, his, his sister, Samantha, went to Miami. His sister, Melissa, went to Texas. Um, I guess one of his sisters is married to David Blau, the backup NFL quarterback. Didn't realize that. But, but you know, this is an explosive corner with size and speed. And, with you know, he's a true number one corner. I mean, this is a number one corner. You could make an argument that Ayuk for Christian Gonzalez might be a fair deal straight up. Now, I don't think that the Patriots would go for this. Um, Elliot Wolf is their, you know, Ron Wolf's kid is their general manager. They're not going for this. They're not going for Christian Gonzalez and next year's number one. But if you sweeten the deal, they might go for it. Um, for example, you know, let's say you sweeten the deal and said, you know, we'll give you a corner going back. You know, we'll, we'll give you Sammy Womack or we'll give you, uh, um, you know, Darrell Luter or, uh, you know, we'll give you Ambry Thomas. Um, you know, I mean, I, I think there's if the 49ers threw a young corner back, that might help. If maybe instead of trading the first round pick in Christian Gonzalez, it was the 49ers have the right to fl flip flop first round picks with new England, uh, that would be, that would be obviously, um, you know, a little bit more equitable or maybe it's Christian Gonzalez and their first round choice to the Niners for Brandon Ayuk, Ambry Thomas and the Niners second round pick. Maybe it's something like that, or maybe it's, you know, Ayuk and Ambry Thomas and a conditional pick, um, you know, in the 2025 draft, but I, there's no way the Niners could get Christian Gonzalez and um, the Pats' first-round pick. Now, if you want to take Christian Gonzalez and the Pats' second-round pick, they might do that, and I might do that. I mean, that might be the 35th pick in the draft in round two at the top of round two and a, a starting corner. And you've already drafted Pearsall, and you already drafted Cowing, and you got Debo, and you got JJ, you got all these other receivers. I might do that. So while I'm laughing at Madsen's trade because it's preposterous, um, at the same time, I love it. I love that. I love the idea of it. One, I love the idea if you're going to trade Brandon Ayuk to send him to a team that there's no chance he wins with. So there's no chance he ever wins with New England. So that's good. Then you, you're also sending him to a place where it, he's no chance that he prevents you from going to the Super Bowl because they're in the AFC. So sending him to the Patriots in the AFC on a you know second division AFC team. Uh, that's where he's going to be the lone weapon. He'll 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 probably be the all-pro receiver. He might be the number one receiver in football there. Um, but he's not going to win the Super Bowl, and he's not going to prevent you from winning the Super Bowl. So on that note, I like the idea of trading IU to the AFC over Green Bay, let's say. Well, there's some people suggesting they should trade him to Green Bay or Kansas City. I don't want to send him to Kansas City because he's going to win the Super Bowl in Kansas City. I don't want to send him to Green Bay because he can prevent the Niners from winning the Super Bowl or going to the Super Bowl if he's in Green Bay. Sending him to New England is a dream scenario as far as where to send him. AFC, other side of the country, I uh, never hear from him again. He's never going to win a Super Bowl there. Um, you never have to worry about them winning the Super Bowl with him. So I think sending him to New England makes sense. Getting Christian Gonzalez and a pick would be great. But there's no chance in hell you're getting Christian Gonzalez in their first-round pick when they know they could wind up in the first pick in the draft and you want to get fired as a general manager, just trade, just trade a, a future number one that becomes the first pick in the draft plus a first round corner uh, to the 49ers for Brandon Ayuk. And you'll see how fast you'll get fired in new England. I mean, that would lead to his firing. But if, once again, if the Niners could sweeten the pot by sending a corner back and maybe flip flopping number ones or, or taking New England's number one, but giving them the Niners number two, or you know maybe it's the 49ers throw Ayuk and a two and a four, and they get you know that first pick or that first round pick. But there's no way you're getting Gonzalez in that first round pick without including more on on the Niner end. But I love it, Madsen. I love it. I love the I love how it's a homer trade, um, uh, you know, done by a, a guy who does a Niner Niner deal. But I also love the fact that he's thinking, you know, one, that this is that a trade might be, you know, coming. 
and that this might be an attractive spot. I mean, at the end of the day, no matter what Green Bay offers you, do you want to trade him there? No, at the end of the day, no matter what Kansas City's offering you, do you want to trade IU to Kansas City? You know, I mean, probably not. But if you could send him to New England and you could get a, a true number one corner, and, um, a, you know, even if it was their second round pick, I think I would do it. Um, if it was their first round pick, I would include my second um, to, to balance it out. If it was a first round pick, I would, I, you know, I would, I would throw out a pick swap. So, you know, the 49ers would have the opportunity to swap picks so they could give their late first to New England for a high first. Uh, but almost, I can almost guarantee you that that first round draft choice from New England is going to be in the top 10 top half of the first round. And I can almost guarantee you that the Niners first round pick next year is going to be in the bottom half of the first round. So do you want to flip, flip flop draft picks in the first round and give us Christian Gonzalez? I do that. You want to, you want me to throw you a two? So you throw the Niners a one in Christian Gonzalez. I do that. You want to go conditional picks on the Niner end going back to try to soften the blow. You want to throw in a Womack or a looter or an Ambry Thomas to make it a little bit more fair. I basically like the parameters of Madsen's deal. I just don't think there's a chance the Niners could get Christian Gonzalez in a number one. But if it's out there, do it. If that trade was out there today, I would absolutely do it. I wouldn't even think twice about it. Send over Christian Gonzalez. Now you've got a tremendous number one corner. And we'll make do for the year without IU somehow, some way with Cowing and Pearsall and JJ and Debo. And we'll make it all work somehow on this end. Um, and, you know, the bottom line is if the 49ers are ever going to get a replacement offensive tackle for Trent Williams, they're going to have to wind up with a high first round pick. They're only going to wind up with a high first round pick is if they trade for one or if they're really bad. So this could be the trade that nets you your future replacement left tackle because you may wind up with the 12th pick in the draft or the 10th pick in the draft or the eighth pick in the draft. And then you could wind up getting Christian Gonzalez and, and your future offensive tackle replacement for Trent Williams. So um, I, I laughed at this Madsen tree at trade when I first saw it, but I loved it. And um, it's very one-sided in the Niner favor, but there's, as I said, four or five different ways to make that a lot more equitable and more fair for New England, uh, so it's not just a total one-sided Niner Niner deal. But I'd be interested. I would absolutely be interested. Um, and that's the that's the door that I would be knocking on, and that's the uh, team I want to do a deal with. And I think there's ways to make that deal work. Now, they may just say, all, all, you know, at downright no to the first round draft choice. Um, okay, I take Christian Gonzalez in a second. I take Christian Gonzalez in a second and a fourth. Uh, I take Christian Gonzalez in a second and a fifth. Um, there's deals. There's ways to work that out. I love the way Madsen's thinking, but uh, I don't think there's a chance the Niners could get a one and Christian Gonzalez. But man, that's the team I'd be talking to, and I'd be trying to hammer out some deal that made sense. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Thanks to Pig and a Pickle for sponsoring this video. Thanks to uh, thanks to our good friends at Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring this video as well. And um, thanks to all of you guys for supporting the crew show on YouTube.